As we continue on with the visual principles series of assignments, we get to part two. Part two is where we're going to work to communicate emotions instead of the visual principles terms that we used in part one. So it gets a little bit more complex. These are a little bit more of abstract terms, and we're going to challenge you further to work on communicating without words with these simple shape restrictions. So at this point, you should have selected three emotions from the provided list and worked on sketching for each of those emotions. And then we get to the portion where we're gonna translate those sketches into Adobe Illustrator very similarly to how we did with part one. So here I've opened the template in Adobe Illustrator. This was provided to you on the learning management system. And you'll see right off the bat, this is a much simpler template. There's only one page or one artboard and there's three squares, one for each emotion. So you will only be translating each emotion one time. So now that we have this open, let's start by doing a save as like we did before. Really important file etiquette. So I'm gonna come in here and do a save as, add my name to the beginning of the file, save it as an Illustrator file, go ahead and click save. Okay. So now all of the same rules apply to this project. So everything that we learned from the part one is applied here. Also the process of making the shapes and working in the file are very similar. So you can always look back at part one for that. So you can work on creating each of your compositions and putting them in these squares. For this one, we're not dictating point, line, or plane. You could use whatever shape grouping you want for each emotion. So if you wanna have a plane, a point, and a line, that's great. If you wanna do two lines and a point, that's fine three lines, whatever it is that you wanna do. We wanna leave you that flexibility because maybe certain emotions are easier to communicate with certain shapes. So you have that possibility. The other thing we need to look at in this file is we need to change this text. So that's a little bit different from part one. In this assignment, we have the ability to actually change the text because it needs to be unique to what you selected. So under each of these compositions that you create, we need to actually list the emotion that you used or you selected and then also the concepts from part one. So maybe here you chose joy, so we'll list that. Then you need to think about what are the concepts from part one that are being used to create and communicate joy in your composition. So it could be symmetry, emphasis, unity, scale, tension, space, order, any of those concepts. And you need to list at least three. So one that's easy is symmetry or asymmetry. No matter what, your composition will either be using symmetry or asymmetry. So that's one you should always be able to list. But then you wanna think about what are the other ones that you're working with? Maybe it's emphasis, maybe it's repetition, whatever they are. And you can list more than three. If there's more than them, that's great too. Maybe there's a possibility of listing four or five, but at least three need to be listed next to each one. And those should really show us what concepts from part one are you layering and using together to communicate your emotion that you selected. So once you have all of that filled out, you've completed your three compositions and you've entered in the concepts from part one that you're working with, you're really done. So let's go ahead and save again. And then I wanna do a save as to export this file. It's very similar to what we did on part one. There's only one artboard this time, which makes it a little bit easier. So I'm gonna come down here and go to PDF click save. There's only one artboard, so all of this is grayed out. And then we're gonna go with the exact same settings. So those default settings are fine. And then again, in the background, it's gonna create a separate file for us that we can open and ultimately work with to submit to the learning management system for grading. Don't forget that on this one, similar to part one, you also need to include your sketching. So I go over that in a separate video, but you'll also need to include that sketching in the same file and combine it together so the sketching can be graded. I know that's already been shown, but it needs to be included with the final file as well. So there's that other video to look at for that. Although chances are the sketching is probably similar to what you did on part one and the process is probably very similar to include it in this PDF for part two. So I think that covers most of what you'll need to know to work on part two. Again, if you need help with making the shapes, masking, anything like that, go back to that part one video and that information is there for you because it definitely still applies to part two as well. If you have any questions, you can always write your instructor to get more help and best of luck to you on completing this assignment.